All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm here with Tonda. He's uh, head of software engineering and VR engineers. And he was the guy and his team was the team behind the uh, Somnium VR1 special dual uh, stacked uh, aspheric lenses. And we thought we'll do this ad hoc video because a lot of people are asking us a question. Hey, how is it possible that uh, after you know Steve was testing the headset and I was of, of course and we are testing here and we measured a lot of things and I showed it already in several blog posts how is it possible that your headset is so bright and how is it possible that the image is so sharp because you know some other producers of other manufacturers of headsets they use similar screens or same screens as, as you do and they get completely different results how is it possible Arthur are you lying to us or what's going on here and I thought, hey, we'll just sit down very quickly and, and discuss how much optics actually affects the image quality and brightness in the end. And Tonda will tell you a few technical reasons for this. And then we'll probably do some other cool uh, announcements, not announcements, but some hints in the, for the future. So Tonda, I'll just leave you like, what are the main reasons why the image could be brighter and sharper than, for example, other? Optical. Thank you, Arthur. So uh, the main reason is optical design. The lens system is designed in a way to get as light as possible through uh, in contrast to most recent technologies that are utilizing internal reflections. Uh, and uh, second reason why we have so sharp image is that it covers as area of display as possible. Yeah. It means that the dual stack allows us to cover as much of the surface area of the image. Exactly. Yeah. So these are two main reasons. And also the sharpness of the image, it's a feature of the lens. Because you can design lens that cover a big portion of display that uh, provides a big field of view, but the image would be blurry because lens itself is not able to render such a big resolution. Yeah. And our lens was designed also uh, with, we had in mind to maximize this resolution. Okay, so yeah. lens itself is capable to display almost double the resolution that it currently displays. So that's the oh, third we'll get to reason. something interesting. Huh? It's very nice I, nice. I would say why we have such great image quality. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so let me, let me repeat. Um, so the brightness is the aspect of the lens where it allows to let through, we will not tell how, but it will allow us to let through as much light as possible from the screen. Right. So number two is the sharpness is also a, an, uh, so two was we're able to cover, our lens is able to cover the maximum amount of surface of the screen. Right. That, I, for me, that's like collecting the light and kind of taking as much as, you know, uh, visual information in as possible and providing it to your eyes back. Um, and also that's why the dual stack set up and things like this, right? And right. the third was the, the design of the lens allows us to display almost the double of resolution which we currently have. So it kind of is designed in a way that it allows to full resolution to go through. Right. That's some, by the way, that's something new for me um, even because I didn't realize that the, the, the lens design also depends on the how much resolution goes through, you know? Many people think, wrongly of course they think like ah oh, what can be wrong you just put good you take you take the best display you can get just slap something on it and then you have a great uh, 4k 4k headset doesn't work like that um and it's it's much more complex uh okay and then i think what about warping warping the, the mathematical yes, warping of the that, image that is the software reason currently yeah. that also affects the image quality because if warping is not written properly and all the processing algorithms are not like fine-tuned, you can also lower the image resolution, image quality, degrade the colors and so on by yep. use uh, inappropriate or non-optimized warping. Yeah, I, I have to say the, the difference between VR1 image quality, I know I'm biased, please don't comment that I'm biased, okay? I'm CEO of Somnium, obviously, you can see it. But uh, the image quality of VR1 and the brightness is such a huge difference. Um, the, the, the sharpness and everything, when I go from VR1 to some other headsets I have, 
it's incredible. It, it's just, it's just, it, it's, it's mind blowing, and and it blows my mind every time I go and and compare. But um, talking about sharpness of the image, by the way, uh, people were asking, and Steve in his videos, the VR flight sim guy. If you are not subscribed to his channel, subscribe to his channel. I'll leave the link to his channel below. Um, he was testing. He's testing VR one. We sent him the unit almost a month ago. He's testing every day, several hours. He's flying, and uh, so far he's loving it. Um, and what he's using a lot is um, the our implementation in house of NVIDIA sharpening. Right. Uh, so he's turning it on and he's playing with the render resolution because again we can go down with the render resolution and the image is still of a great quality, still very sharp. But as if you apply sharpening on top of this, you can play with, okay, do I go 70% or to the 70% of the render resolution, but I go with sharpening to 30% and then performance is better and you're getting the same result. So he's playing with this. Can you, so we have, this is an in-house developed algorithm for NVIDIA sharpening, right? Right. Uh, we included several algorithms. Uh, we have uh, NVIDIA sharpening with multiple flavors of that. We have uh, AMD FSR included. So AMD FSR as well. Yeah. And uh, we have also our in-house algorithm, which I would say performs with uh, higher clarity, which is currently in beta testing. Which nobody has seen so far. Steve, I'm looking at you. You didn't see the in-house uh, sharpening yet. So. And uh, right now I would say that uh, NVIDIA sharpening uh, would be mostly recommended for optimization purposes, as you mm -hmm. mentioned lowering the resolution and getting more FPS with same image quality, same image perceived resolution. And that in-house algorithm would be mostly used in top high-spec PCs for getting as much quality as possible. Yes, so if you like the NVIDIA sharpening, the in-house is even better. Now, also I want to mention that the, all the sharpenings you just mentioned are also applicable to mixed reality images. Right. So it's not only for VR, but it's also for MR cameras. Exactly. Uh, and even if you are, for instance, somehow out of focus in a mixed reality camera, to some extent, the in-house algorithm can compensate this. But mostly it's used for getting sharper image uh, for instance in the simulator cockpit controllers and uh, which is yeah, super important labels and so okay, on. Okay I want to repeat so far with those guests we had here youtubers when they were here or um, Steve at home right now with his headset they don't have that we didn't show that yet. No it wasn't included Ex in the exactly. software. Exactly so that's something we'll keep for for, for, for the rest but um, yeah, I think that's the whole purpose of this video. Thanks, Tonda, for, for, for saying it. Because, again, I get a lot of questions. How is it possible you're measuring the brightness cannot be right because it's the same display? You, you know, all these kind of questions from people. But the optics engine, how Arthur from Hypervision says it, optical engine of the, of the, of the VR headset is actually what makes VR headset a VR headset. That's true. The whole VR1 was designed around double stack optical lenses we designed. Exactly. That's the whole point of the of VR1. That's the core. And that's the core. <laughs> and that's uh, that's really. So thank you very much. Thank you, Arthur. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.